follow me upstairs like now. Right now? But shouldn't I train this guy? I think he can figure out how to sit on his ass and watch TV all day. Welcome to Black Irish Podcast. Hey there, and welcome to an all-new episode of Black Irish Podcast with myself, Brendan McCorkle, and Mike is always all right, Crawford. What's up, babe? What up, bro? How you doing this week? Because I'm doing great. I've had a great weekend, and it's a great day. To be Good. I love to hear that. That's always the best. I'm doing well, man. You know why I'm doing well? One of the many reasons is I've figured out little ways to change things that annoy me into things that give me pleasure. One of them being telemarketers. I love telemarketers now because you know what you can do? Their job is to stay on the phone with you no matter what. So as long as you're not mean or threatening or cursing or anything, like you can just say whatever you want or do whatever you want. Usually these people get my uh, whatever I'm listening to because 90% of the time, like there's just music blasting in the house. I'll just walk straight up to the speaker and like put the phone on it, go do something for like 10 minutes, come back and be like, hey, do you like that? They're like, uh, Mr. Uh, hang on, I got one more. And just set the phone down, walk away again. It's fantastic, dude. <laughs> Either that or start asking them personal questions. Like, hey, what's your name? Where do you live? And they're like, uh, uh, like, you can keep him on the phone and make it as uncomfortable as you want for them. Trust me, those people just avoid your number when they call back. But now I look forward to it. Bro, you live a good life. And that's what you do. <laughs> that's right. Play the telemarketers. <laughs> Have fun with them. What else are you supposed to do? Let them ruin your day? Why? They're just trying to make money. They hate doing they their job. They don't ruin my day either. I don't play with them. They don't ruin my day. I just hang up on them. I get joy out of hanging up on them. Sometimes I'll get a laugh and like talk a little bit of trash. Like, yo, you really want to call me right now? Oh man, you must be bored at work. <laughs> Do you tell them ever tell them what you're doing? Like, oh, you caught me right in the middle of it. Fill in the blank. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I should. That should. That would probably be funny. If it was a woman, she's probably gonna be grossed out. Good. But it's okay. Whatever. Who cares? It's just all in good fun. As long as you're not nasty, who gives a shit? Right. Right. I don't know. There you go. I think I'm gonna. You know, take that and implement that as one of my campaigns because I think I'm going to run for uh, run for office. What do you think about that? Uh, what's what what's right? You're going to run for like from city council? No, city PTA president. <laughs> I've got I've you got a, that. I've got a good campaign. I think I you I think do. all of the parents. Now, like around this, because I, you know, mentioned before, I live across the street from my son's school. So I, I think that they all know who's responsible for s sending the dank into the atmosphere. So now it's to the point where, like, there's certain parents, I think, that are, like, try and time it. Or, you know, like, I definitely notice certain people, like, roll up, bumping music, like, are you looking for an invite or what, what's going on here? What's going on, buddy? Because you're kind of partying in front of my house when school's out. <laughs> I think I would get the vote. They definitely, they definitely want to come hang out with you, which means you would get the vote. Bro. <laughs> you got my vote, man. You got my vote. You should definitely be the PTA president. Oh, man. That would be hilarious, dude. What would your campaign be if you were going to run for PTA president? What would you, what would you base your campaign on? Uh, I don't know, man. Probably I would just like I'm the cool. I'm always cool, man. So I'm just gonna be the cool guy. Yeah, but you actually like worked <laughs> at a school. So what? Like, but you but you the know the parents because I was cool. Like the kids gravitated because I was cool, man. I wore Jordans and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> your camp cool. your campaign slogan be don't worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> There you go, man. Take a load off. There you go. Take a load off. Take I got this. Off. I like it. 
I like it. We're going to make it nice and comfortable. I don't know how productive we're going to be, but we're going to be nice and comfortable. <laughs> there you go, man. We're going to be nice and relaxed, man. We're going to get all the work done. I promise you, man. They would come to me and make sure I make sure all my kids always got their homework done and all that. But it's going to be a chill environment, man, when I'm around. When you're the head honcho? There you go, When you're bro. the big chief? Hey, you. I got chiefed the other day. You got chiefed? Yeah, I got chiefed. Like, I was in Big Five getting some baseball gear for, or basketball gear, I don't remember. One of the kids needed something. I was in Big Five, and there was, like, one of the guys walked up. He was, like, a cool Asian dude with a mullet and was like, hey, can I help you, Chief? And I was like, it shot. I was like, damn, I haven't been hit with one of those in a while. <laughs> Woo! Chief. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Dang, man. Bro, now that you say it like that, it has been a while. Dude, like, that's kind of, that's a throwback construction thing where it was, like, you would call the person that was lower than you on the totem pole, Chief, like, you know, the person that was your helper, you'd be like, hey, Chief, go get, go grab me that. Like, it was, like, derogatory, you know? Oh, man, no, 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 we ain't doing it like that. That wasn't, that wasn't us. Yeah, it was, you know, too many Chiefs, not oh. enough Indians, that was always the thing. I think that's a horrible saying now that I just said it out loud, but it's been about 15 to 20 years since I've heard it or said it. <laughs> Why do you think that's a horrible saying? I don't know. I don't think you're supposed to say that stuff anymore. So then if you're not supposed to say Indian, how are you supposed to make that correlation? Because it doesn't sound as smooth. Not enough high chiefs and lower level Native Americans. Like that doesn't come across as well. I don't know. Bro, it's not about the actual people. It's just the kind of thought about the same. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. But I I don't know. There's a lot of weird shit going on in my head these days I gotta sort through. One of them being there's a gigantic cookie controversy in my neighborhood. A cookie controversy? These gosh damn Girl Scouts are back. <laughs> it's that time of year. But here's the situation that I have. There's a lot of fire types of Girl Scouts, but like you can't go wrong. It's not about like six boxes that I would actually eat, like, so you can't go wrong. They have new Except ones. Except for s'mores, you can keep that. Except s'mores, but there's two different kinds of s'mores. No Samoas. Them, oh the, Samoas with the coconuts. Yeah, yeah Samoas. See, I like Samoas. I didn't think I ever would, but coconut is is one of those things where I staved off for so long in my life, and then as you mature, your your palate changes. Your tongue, palate, taste buds, they all. It, everything changes. You get more sensitive to other tastes and stuff. Same as smell, same as all this other crap. So I hated it for a long time. Still hate Almond Joys. Those are gross. But toasted coconut stuff is starting to work its way back up in my... Like, I'm enjoying it a little bit. But that being said... Toasted there's coconut? That sounds so bad. Two separate bakeries that dis manufacture and distribute cookies throughout the entire United States to Girl Scouts. So the closest regions that I have is Los Angeles and Orange County, and they are supplied by two separate bakeries. So you can literally get two different types of the same cookie, but I don't want to have to drive two hours to buy cookies. That seems like it's a problem. But they just have the better cookies. I don't know. Hold on, son. Are we still talking about Girl Scout cookies? Yes. Or are we talking about cookies. No, Girl Scout cookies specifically. Like the s'mores is a perfect, perfect example because that's my girl's favorite. So the ones that they have, the bakery that distributes in Los Angeles County, theirs are stacked s'mores. It's like cookie, chocolate, marshmallow, cookie. The ones that are in Orange County, the different bakery is the same thing, but they're dipped in chocolate. So the chocolate's not in the middle, it's coated around the outside. So that being said, I'm like, what the hell's going on here? And then, certain Girl Scouts don't have certain cookies. So they're like, oh, you could get these French toast cookies, but not around where you live. It's like, hey, 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 what's going on here? Now I gotta hunt down Girl Scouts? That's not a good look. Not a good look. Somebody that looks like me driving around looking for Girl Scouts? E. <laughs> That's not a good look, bro. That's a bad look. And here's the other thing. It's just not, it's I've been getting look, it's a pretty bad look. I've been getting pissed off lately because I've been driving around like as I'm running my daddy errands or whatever I'm doing, 
I've been driving around looking for Girl Scout cookies, and it just occurred to me today. I'm like, where are these? Where are these kids? Like, it's a multi-million dollar business. You should be pounding the pavement. What are you doing? And I'm like, it's one o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. They're at school, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where are these yeah. cookies? Where are your parents? Have better parents. But if you can just go to the bakery, won't you just do that in the middle of the day when nobody? Well, there's always traffic where you're at. But I'm just saying. Well, you listen, know the it's of, you know the bullshit part of this whole story, though. What? Is that we can't go to a damn bakery and pick up our Girl Scout cookies? Like, if you can't get them from a Girl Scout, you don't get them. Congratulations for living in L.A. So you can just go to the damn bakery that actually bakes the damn cookies and get them like no, you can't three box if you you just said that. Man. No, I said the bakeries. There's two bakeries. The distribution between L.A. and Orange County are to the two separate bakers. The bakeries are in like fucking middle of nowhere. Who gives a shit, Ohio or something like that? You know oh, what I mean? Man, I thought you had the access to the bakery. No. Oh, oh I had dro drove straight to the source if that was the case. No, 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 no. <laughs> Trust me, so I probably shouldn't be that close to, to the action city. anyway. So that means you're actually talking about driving to like Orange County and looking for little kids. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. It's a problem. <laughs> I can't go around asking, oh, like, asking people at Starbucks, go, hey, is your daughter a Girl Scout? I just need five minutes with her. Like, straight <laughs> arrested, bro. I won't even make it out the fucking door with my cold brew. <laughs> yo, welcome to somebody like, yo, we're a little girl. So yeah. <laughs> I need me some of that brownie action, you know what I'm saying? They'd be like, what? You looking for black girls? No, 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 no. Bro. Hey, bro, yeah. I don't know. Is there anything you look forward to seasonally like that, food-wise? Because Girl Scout sell cookies, you know, it seems like they're supposed when to sell for warm, a couple of weeks. We eat but... seafood where I'm from. We don't eat it all year round because when it's cold, you don't get good seafood. Yeah. When it gets warm, you can get you seafood. Shrimps and crabs and crab legs. Not they shrimp. Come with, they Prawns. Come <laughs> so it's kind of a seasonal thing here, man. Y'all got the same season all year round, so you can eat whatever the hell you want. All, all right, but what about like okay? So your favorite j spot, your favorite fast food spot, they got to be doing. I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming they're doing the Shamrock Shake right now with St. Patty's Day coming up. Usually in March, they do Shamrock Shake, which is like mint. I don't know nothing about no cream. goddamn shamrock shake. I don't eat. What? I, don't, I can't have a. I, can't I have know a you shake, can't, but so you still go to that facility of McDonald's like all the time. You never notice that they have eat, it. I don't eat McDonald's, man. Fuck you. Eat, yes, man. you they do. Got a, you lion sack. They got a five dollar biggie bag. No, man. Yeah, you eat McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's is expensive, bro. Wendy's, baby. All right. Well, then it's a recent switch. Don't act like you never eat no McDonald's. Come on. Oh, no, man. no. I just don't eat it anymore. All right. Well, actually, I ain't going to say I don't eat it anymore. It'd be like once in a blue moon. All right. But you still you still have consistently eaten it for your 30 some odd yeah, years on this earth. You never heard enough Shamrock Shake? No, I know what a shamrock shake is. I'm just saying my places don't have them, but you have a lot better fast food places to eat, bro. Like, you have good fast food. Do you like the McRib? Eat. What about the McRib? That's a seasonal. It's the worst. That's so trash. Right? That's so trash. Yeah. Like, if I catch you eating the McRib, I might smack it out your hand, man. Like, don't eat that. That is not, like, that's not right. See, but here's the thing. I'm aware of the McRib, even though I don't eat it. I've tried one bite twice in my life, and I'm like, yep, this is the most garbage. How do you have a knuckle in a fucking meatless sandwich? This makes no sense. Ah, so gross. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you actually had... How, how was it? Like, do you have a recall? Do you recall? What it I remember like? that it tasted like decent barbecue sauce. And I was like, I would rather have the two buns and barbecue sauce with no meat. That would be more delightful. It would be easier to swallow. Yeah. I want to know what they use as that rib. Like, because I don't think the, the bone removal uh, dude, you, patent was out yet. You know the what? The bone removal patent is from the dude on, um, on uh, he was on the show with Mark Cuban in them. So oh, Shark they, Tank? 
Yeah, there you go. So he just and that show is a no show. So the McRib is old, dude. So I therefore, bet you, how are you like you know that hot dogs. Moving the bone. Hot dogs <laughs> are made out of all the spare parts of pigs and stuff like that. It's like the head, the eyeballs, the hooves, the intestines, all the gnarly shit is in the hot dogs. I bet you McDonald's has a similar thing. Like when they get all the meat for the ground beef, quote unquote, <laughs> they like take all the scraps that they can't make into hamburger patties and grind that shit up and cover it in barbecue sauce. They just press it in little George Foreman grills to make the <laughs> look like grill marks. And it's just a hot dog covered in fucking barbecue sauce. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just want to know, like, what did that? Now they can say it's real red meat, and they're removing the bone, even though I highly doubt that. Yeah, but before that invention was out, because we all know as the world, like he told For the sure world it was like, knuckles and all. I got a non-processed <laughs> <laughs> McRib. <laughs> well, what were you eating, Brendan? I don't know, but I, I also eat Seven Eleven sushi, so or I used to. So <laughs> what? Okay. we've been over this. Don't sushi? act like this is a surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot. <laughs> like it was. I would go in there and be like, "Do I want a spicy bite? Uh, not heartburn today. Let me go get the sushi instead. That's nice and cool." Hey yo, I've eaten healthy eat today. Your insides are made of steel, buddy. Let me just let me just say that. <laughs> I'm gonna say he ate sushi from the 7 Eleven. I didn't even know 7 Eleven sold sushi. That has to be just a California thing. That's first. And second of all, it has to be some of the worst sushi in the world. It's not, which is really sad. I've it's I've done worse. I've done like world. extra mile Chevron station sushi too. Like, <laughs> They're California rolls. It's imitation crab. It's just something to dip. It's something cold to dip soy sauce in, so you don't feel like a complete animal. Like if the sandwiches weren't ever good, I always ate out of gas stations in Seven Eleven. We were always on the road for work. It was like you stop when you get a chance to stop, and you get back on the road. You know what I mean? That's why. That's why you have the gut of a champion, buddy. I don't know. It was one of those things where you just had to do it. Oh, all right. Well, hang on. Let me ask you this, Mister Fucking No McDonald's. Just wrap this up nice and tight. What about McNopoly? Are you still a sucker for McNopoly? McDonald's. Absolutely. Okay. I'm play that shit one day, man. I'll play that shit. Did you see the documentary on that? Yeah, it's a scam. I know, but I'm gonna win one day. I'm gonna yeah. scam them. Okay, that's great. It's a scam, yeah. but not my, not to me. I'm going to be the one that breaks the cycle. Okay, buddy. You keep scratching those scratchers, partner. Hey. Mm -hmm. Do you do scratchers? I know he, I know people who want million dollars off scratch. All right. Do you do million. scratchers? Two million. No. All right. I mean, I used to. One of my buddies used to do it in the back of church. He had the best. You're going to make a million one day, man. You're going to be like, you're going to be so rich from it. You're going to be like, he told me he was going to do it. Well, good. That, that would be hilariously fun if you won the lotto <laughs> the lotto what hey what are you gonna do are you uh, lotto or powerball it's powerball's twice as much yeah that's what i'm saying man i'm trying with the powerball so i can change a whole bunch of people's lives that i don't even know oh i like that one all right all right oh well i got stung by a bee did you know that that kind of sucked you said what i got stung by a bee recently that, do you like slow uh no not too bad it was one of those things <laughs> where it was like uh we were driving in the car and i didn't realize what was going on and then i was just kind of like oh my back like what is this like i was going i had the eight-year-old in the car and then i was driving to go get the three-year-old and i was like oh okay and then it wouldn't go away and i was like oh oh ah hey ah what is this? And then I was like, oh, all right, man, whatever, dude. And then, like, I turn the corner, I make a left or something, and then straight up B flies out of my shirt in the car and is, like, flipping around on the dashboard. Like, it's it's trying to fly away or die or I don't know what's going on. And it's I was just like, be, buddy. what? I don't know. That's their, life. That's their lifespan. One sting and death. I would never sting anyone. But if you don't know that, I don't know. So I was like, dude, what the? Ow. You don't ow, think ow. know that? Well, uh, it was still alive after. Like, how long does it take for this thing to die? 
Is that, oh, is that what happens where if they sting you and they're stink? Because I think that's the rule is, or the rule, science, is if their stinger comes off, then it's, you know, lights out for the beat. But if it's not, then maybe that, maybe what happens is they just rip their ass off and then they bleed out through their ass. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe that's the reason why. And maybe that's why it takes them a little bit of time to die. Like, if you broke off your arm, like, if you punched somebody and it's stuck in their head, and then in Mortal Kombat, like, ripped your arm off at the shoulder, and then you just didn't have a way to seal it up, you would just die out, right? Yeah. All right. I'm just saying, I don't know. Are you allergic to bees in any way that you know of? No. Have you ever been stung? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why do you think people are so afraid of being allergic to bees? Like, I like. Do you think it's just because a lot of people saw like micro? I love your shit, and you can't have no control over it. Like, you can't stop a bee from stinging you. You get all like swell up and shit. That's a bad day, bro. Are you more afraid of bees or snake? Snakes by far. Oh really? What yeah. if it's a non-poisonous snake? Are you still taking that over some bees? I um, don't want no snake. All of them look. All of them are poisonous to me. Got you. All right, all right, all right. Well, do you think that if you were in really, really good shape that you could strangle a snake to death? Probably not. But I can throw him far enough that he ain't going to be able to get anywhere near me. So you could run away. Snakes are fast as fuck, bro. I don't know. Bro, I'm going to throw... Like, if it's a snake, I'm throwing him, like, far, bro. Like, if he lives the landing, then good luck to him. Because I'm tossing a snake if I ever have to grab one. Are I'm you doing it, hands. Are you doing it like, shot put style where you go woof, 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 and let it go? Or are you trying to do, no, like, a, like, a over-the-shoulder, like, reach mm. back, hope it doesn't grab your ass, and then, wah, fling it? No, two-hand. Off to the distance, my friend. Kind of like a you discus go. throw, but with two hands. I got you. There you go. Did you do track and field in high school? No. Did you do any physical fitness stuff in high school? Sports. That's yeah. That's about it. What about PE? Yeah. How were you in PE? Well, in high school, I mean, after 10th grade, I, I mean, after 9th grade, I didn't have to take PE. It was weightlifting, weight training for gym. Because it was a mandatory elective. Yeah. And I ran track, played football and basketball. That's it. Just sports. My outside activity came from running from the police for my life. (laughs) (laughs) You got to keep them legs in shape, baby. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Oh, I didn't do shit. I barely even dressed for PE in high school. Because we had to go for two years and you had to dress... You at least three days a week out of the five, you could pick two days where you didn't have to do shit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was pretty lame. Mm-hmm. They're just like, don't fight or kill each other. Just walk around the field once and then don't hurt each other. You know, like that was it. <laughs> they did. They weren't too demanding. I was on the wrestling team for one day. Did you know that? Why only one day? Because my grades were shit. I was like, it's the fucking wrestling team. Like, who cares? Mm -hmm. They're like, you don't have a 2.0. I'm like, yeah, but that's just because I don't like doing homework. It's not because I can't. I was like, can I, like, stay with the team for a little while and pull my grades up? And they're like, "Mm, no, come back when you have your grades (laughs) up. Like, fuck you guys. I'm out of (laughs) here. But it was literally like my friends were on the wrestling team because they were on the swimming team the other time. So it was like just to stay in shape, they did both or whatever. I don't know what the fuck they did. But so I was like, oh, okay, I'll, uh, you know, I'll go out for the wrestling team just so I can kind of get some exercise and hang out with, with the homies. And it was like, no, first day you're out of there, which was probably good because it turns out the wrestling team, like, and swimming, like, they're all fucking weird, super weird, which I was still friends with them. Is weird. But they would, like, piss on each other. You'd be strong as shit if you're on the wrestling team, bro. Yeah. Like, our wrestling team at my high school, like, they used to carry each other up and down stairs. Yeah, the fireman's carry stuff. Yeah. What? At the end of practice, you think I'm carrying a sweaty dude on my back? That's when you need it. The last, the last thirty seconds of the match. That's when you need to break through. I did. I did one wrestling practice and said, "You know what? 
whoever told me that I should do this to be prepared for my sports lied to me because I don't do that. What? You get some cauliflower what? here for no reason, just the yeah, same I'm shape. Just, I'm just not like trying to be touching on no man that much, bro. Like I'm okay with that. Like that's weird to me, bro. You think we about to get down here and just like grapple on each other and be no, 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 no. and be all sweaty while we doing it? Absolutely not. Like wrestling is a weird like. WWE is different, even though that's weird too. But like the real wrestling, being down and like all aggressive, no, that's weird. <laughs> I wish them the best. I wish you the best. Though. I'm never gonna be able to do that. Uh, there was a dude that allegedly got caught stuffing his uh, unitard with socks, <laughs> and it was instantly nicknamed socks, and like to the point where I think he transferred schools eventually. <laughs> the whole school knew. <laughs> I mean, if you had to walk around that unit, you got to do something, bro. No, you don't. You don't want everybody. Because guess what? You know who doesn't go to wrestling matches? Everyone, except for the wrestling team. (laughs) So you don't have to be worried about that. You know what I mean? You shower with these dudes. You get his stuff. And, like, how do you make that look normal? I don't know. No. All you do, all it takes is one girl to be have a boyfriend on the team, and she's going to bring a couple of her friends. And once they see it, it's a wrap for you, buddy. Yeah, going true. around in high school, you see how quick words travel in high school. Like, <laughs> out of here, buddy. Did you guys ever used to play those silly games at uh, like a break? Like, I think we did this like ninth grade year, and then it was kind of over by then. But mainly, like before that, where you do like uh, play like doorknob, where if somebody farted, you had to run and touch a doorknob, and you got to get punched. No. Whoa. No, there was no punching in my school. We had real people to punch because we had real beef in school. So if you wanted to fight, just go fight somebody. We ain't no, this anymore. was this with was like real. your friends. No, 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 we didn't have time to play those type of games in school. Man, school was like real life. For what us. about out of school? Yeah. Real life for us. Fuck you. What about seat check? <laughs> I mean, you never did seat check. You I never mean, had any kind of childhood ever. I mean, we were children and within our neighborhood, but we played things like tag or like. Hide and go hump. Or something. You guys didn't play any of the punching games. That was just a no, no, no. suburban we thing. On each other. No, we weren't punching on each other. You you punch somebody in my neighborhood, they'll punch your ass back. Oh, dude, we did. Yeah, we did the little circle thing where if you did the OK sign and some and you were like had it pressed up against your own body and somebody looked at it, you got to walk over and slug them. But if they put their finger through the hole, then they got to hit you. And then eventually, it's just like fifty. Like if you get somebody like to look at something, you're like you'll, you know, say get their neck or something like that. But flat out punching people, no, nobody's yeah. taking a punch. Bro. Oh, we got to the <laughs> point where we would just play dead arm, where it's like, okay, you go first, and then I go second. Except open chest, open chest. Oh yeah, see punch. open chest. See, come on, all right. It took a little while to get the train running, but there we are. We played open <laughs> chest. That one was fucking. You're talking, but dude. that that game doesn't last long. Like that that goes left really quick, which is why it it, it left really quick. Did, would you go deep. first or second? No, it's not no first or second. It's clear open chest. Like you walking around town, you walking around school anywhere. You see your friend and his chest happens to be open. You just punch it. Like they know <laughs> that's the game. Bro. Yeah, we that's played that, but play. we also would play like, you know, you could start like, I guess we just kept evolving right. the we game to where you could start and battling and back and forth. <laughs> Oh, like you all had crazy like like after a while I mean like we fought against people like against like I said against other neighborhoods and stuff and cool we did that but like just as friends we punch on each other like oh y'all just stood there like this and like your man boy homeboy hit you and then you like hit him back like what no. Not, uh, yeah, open chest was a lot I mean, we had, less. We had older brothers that beat us up and stuff like that for for a situation like that, like to get us tougher. But no, we weren't. But no, our open chest was just random. <laughs> like you get, and that's why it always went left because somebody unexpected and you punch them in their chest. Like now they're angry. Yeah, and if there's other people around, they're also embarrassed. So now it just go. Oh man, yeah, it just place. escalates. Well, that's why we just eventually started doing dead arms because mm-hmm. it was like, all right, let's just stand in front of each other and go. I would always go second though, because I'm like I'm definitely gonna hit you a little bit harder than you hit me, so you go first. <laughs> People are, you know, everybody else's strategy was like I'm gonna go first and hit you so hard that it it gives you a dead arm and you can't hit me back. I'm like, okay, we'll see about that. <laughs> Let's go. 
I don't know. We weren't running around, running around punching each other. We had people to punch on, though, and we wanted to punch on people. But yeah, yeah we weren't punching. We on were each just other. hyper violent with each other, but we never really like got into major squabbles or anything like that. I mean, you know, your occasional shit went down, but it wasn't like I don't know. Kind of the guys that I might like my crew of three and four that I grew up with on my street. Like we, you know, one of, one of them had an older brother who unfortunately passed away early uh, when he was in high school and we were younger. Um, And so then it was kind of like, we didn't have older brothers. Like we were the oldest boys on the block. And there were a couple of guy kids that were a little bit older, but you know, we all kind of ran in different circles. So, and then everybody moved away. So it was kind of like, we just did this shit to each other because we didn't really get it from anybody else. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, we'll toughen each other up by just beating the shit out of each other all the time. I don't know. It's stupid. Well, look, you got to prepare for life, man. Why not? In those good old Palmdale streets, man. Shit. You know what I should have prepared for? That 4x4x48 four by four by challenge. The one that I didn't train for at all and then just started doing out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, you said you didn't train at all. Like, you didn't take no warm-up laps, man? Well, literally. Go out and like, go like, a mile, maybe? Just no, to see, like, okay, no. Let me time like, this up. See, see, see what my time's going to be looking like so I can plan? That was the plan. That was the plan, but I had issues with my back, so I wanted to make sure that I talked it through with the back specialist before I did anything. So then it was like two weeks to go, like two and a half weeks to go, and I was like, okay, I haven't been doing anything. I need to ramp up to this. So I was like, let me just start doing like my weighted exercises, calisthenics, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, that would get my body warmed up, stretched out, whatever. And then I'll start going on, you know, a couple jogs and a couple runs leading up to it. It was like studying for a test for me. Like, I never, you know, I don't study for a test, but if I cram right before, I usually do pretty well. I was thinking I was going to do that too. And then the time just got away from me and I never jogged or ran. <laughs> like, it was just, I just ended up doing this. Um, so it was like Friday, it started Friday, uh, March 4th. And um, basically what happened was I. I started early because I was going out on a date. So it's everybody was supposed to start at Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I started early because that was right in the middle of a movie we were going to. Um, so I started at 3 o'clock. So I did my initial run. Actually, I worked out first because I'm an idiot. So I was like, I'm going to be running this whole weekend. I should probably work out my upper body just because. So I did that first on Friday at like noon, which was dumb. Not dumb, but didn't unnecessary, completely unnecessary. Um, so then I hit the first one. And I was like, let me try and set a decent pace, not really kill myself, but let me just try and jog this thing through. And it came through at 40 minutes, like right about 40 minutes, 10, four, 10 minute miles. I'm like, perfect. That's, that's my goal is to hit 40 every time. And if it goes up to like 50 because of, you know, I'm tired or just don't have whatever, like that's cool. That was going to be my, my range. So I did that. Okay, 40 minute mile. I like that. 40 like minute for four day. miles. That, that, which is pretty good. 10 minute mile, like I'm I'm okay with that. For for yeah, four. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it gets you three hours to rejuvenate. Okay, you can do it. Exactly. Exactly. So that was kind of my thought process. And I, you know, I spaced it out based on I tried to keep it as close to the parameters, you know, starting at eight PM every four hours. I tried to keep it as close to that with also adjusting it for my life and the people I live with, you know? So then Mm -hmm. we got to go out, uh, went to a nice dinner and it was an okay dinner. The company was great. And then went to the movies, then got home at like one in the morning or so, one 15, like sent the babysitter home, put the wife to bed and then strapped up and went out again. So then I ran like a 43 minute and I was like, okay, I was like, you know, like my legs were a little sore, but I'm like, okay, this is, this is more normal. But towards the end, I was like, oh, like I'm starting to get a little tight. No big deal. Go to sleep, wake up for the four o'clock and I'm like frozen. My leg, like right in my groin, it's frozen. So on both sides, but my right side way worse than my left. And I'm like, oh my God, like I don't, I can barely walk right now. What just happened? So I guess like I, like just my muscles just 
tightened up. And I even told my wife later, I was like, feel this. You know, it feels like a cord. And I'm like, feel this. And it was like, felt like a bone. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to do about this. So that one, I was like, you know what? You said you're probably going to have to walk at least one or two of them. Walk this one at a decent pace and see what that's going to look like. And then tend to your muscles and try and loosen them up later. So then that one was like an hour. And I'm like, okay. So I got three in the bag. You know, the first two were okay. And then this one kind of sucked. But I was like, okay, at least I know where I'm at right now. And then my legs just never got better. They only got worse. And I was like, damn, I really screwed this up, man. Like, And I was stretching <laughs> before and after every time. I made sure I was drinking plenty of water. I, you know, I was supplementing like electrolyte additives every now and again to make Were sure. Were you stretching? Every time, before and after. So then it's Saturday morning, and I'm like, let me start a little bit early because my son had basketball at nine. I was like, let me start a little bit early, like 7 30. Well, I end up not getting out of the door until almost eight. And then I'm like, trying to hoof it because I'm running out of time, and it's like, I got to get back in time for my wife to go drop him off because at this point I'm not going to be able to get back. Home. And it's like I only did three miles in an hour because my legs were so tight up at the groin area. It was like if it was tight at the bottom, I could still make longer strides. But since it was tight at the top, at the apex, like my strides were as long as like my eight-year-olds. Like I was taking like a third of the strides I normally would. So I went from going to like, you know, like – 5,000 steps to do four miles to like seven seventy five hundred. like all of a sudden I was like whoa oh man this sucks and I was like I'm locked down so then I just had to like pace back and forth in my house for another 20 minutes to get my extra mile I'm like this is gonna be rough I don't know how I'm gonna do this so I kind of I don't really remember the rest of Saturday to be honest and then like it was just kind of like after after basketball was over and then everybody was home, it was like, okay, well, we really don't have anything to do for the rest of the day. So just, you know, do your thing and we got you, whatever. So it, it was taking me about an hour, hour plus, And it was Saturday was just like, okay, this sucks. Like your legs aren't getting better, but keep going. Just keep going. So that was Saturday. <laughs> and then Sunday, Sunday morning, I did like my, my midnight or whatever one. And then instead of doing the four o'clock, I went at like six because I was trying to get extra recovery. I basically slept in like the, with my legs in the butterfly position because I was so exhausted anyway. So I slept on the couch with like my legs in the butterfly position to try and stretch out my legs. I'm like, it's the last day, dude. You got to do whatever you can. So I like slept a little bit extra Waited till 6 because we had baseball at 8. And then went out and was like, all right, you got three more, dude. Like, no, or no, four more at that point. Yeah, Finish. Yeah, yeah, so four more at that point. I'm like, we got to go. But when I woke up that morning, that was the only time I really had doubt. And I was like, I don't know if you can do this. Like, like mentally, I could do it. <laughs> mentally, I was like you, like, you can. But I was doubting my body, and I was like, Get up and at least go do a mile. Get up, at least go do a mile, because I feel like I remember reading about this 4 by 4 by 48 challenge. Like, even if you're not running, do something strenuous for, you know, however long it would take you to do four miles running if you can't do it or whatever. And I was like, I'm like, you know, getting out there. Where did you read about it at, bro? Like, where did all this even come from? So there's this dude, David Goggins, who is just... You know, his whole thing is stay hard. He's a hard motherfucker. And, you know, it's like conquer your inner bitch, all this stuff. You know, him and Rogan have these mentality things. So that's how I heard about him was through Rogan's podcast a long time ago. And then I got a buddy who's really into fitness out on the East Coast that one day I just saw this post and I was just like, yeah, I think it was in like November of last year. And I'm like, you know what? I bet you I could do that. And at the time, I was actually working out quite a bit. And I'm like, okay, I was feeling good, confident. And then I was like, just kind of threw it out there. And then my homie was like, oh, I'll do that. And I was like, fucking okay. Looks like we're doing it then. And then I, you know, kind of had all these back issues and stuff. So it, it's somebody that's kind of widespread known for doing these kinds of things. He's done this challenge before. 
Um, so I was like, oh, okay. So at the time, I was like, mentally, I'm like, you can for sure do this. It's just a matter of how hard it's going to be versus how hard you think it's going to be. And so I, when I got up and I was like, okay, just get out and do that mile. And then, you know, you can look it up. And as I was out, like, walking the mile, I'm like, you know what? This is the part where everybody stops. This is the part where your body overtakes your brain and you you indulge those thoughts of maybe I could do it a different way and I'll still feel good about it. And I was like, fuck that. You're not going to feel good about it if you do that. Don't even look up the excuse because that's what it's going to be and that's what it's going to feel like. Just <laughs> do it. You're not going to die. You're going to be hurt. It's going to suck. I don't know how long it's going to take to recover, but you're not going to die. The only thing you need to worry about from here on out is don't fall. Because if you fall, you're not going to fucking finish. So my entire goal <laughs> for Sunday was don't fall because my legs were locked up. Like at this point, like my shin splints are so bad that it's like I can't flex my foot. So I'm walking like Frankenstein. I'm just like trying not to bend anything. My knees are jacked. They feel shot. Like everything from my hips down is like, <laughs> you're doing everything wrong. You know, I'm like, nah, we're all right. We're all right. So I, you know, I ended up finishing out, which was amazing. Like it was such a good feeling. Got a little emotional towards like the last leg. Uh, you know, my, my son said something that kind of inspired me uh, in the middle of the day. Like after baseball, we came back. And I hadn't finished my four miles because I was trying to walk around the Little League field. And so we went across the street to the school, and my kids were riding scooters. And I'm like, all right, let me walk around while they're doing their scooters. And we were out there as a family. And my wife had, you know, a coffee date with somebody. So she took the little guy, and me and the eight-year-old were just going around school. And I had, like, a half mile left or something like that. And he's coming by. He's like, you're he said something like scoots by me and is like you might actually finish and i was like hang on whoa 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 and i like wanted to bring him back like that hey i'm not upset that you said that but i just want to know like did you ever think i was definitely gonna do it or definitely not gonna do it and he's like no i thought you were probably gonna do it and i was like okay well that's cool like and that just it meant the world to me that he's like had such limited doubt like, no, my dad said he's going to do it. He's going to do it. And I was like, all right, man, there's no way I'm not doing this now. You know what I mean? So yeah, when I was coming yeah, like that tail end, that last mile, I was like, all right, here we go, dude. Like that, this is what it's about, you know? So yeah, you like, I got to finish it now. A hundred percent. So that felt really good. And then, you know, it was kind of like, okay, now we're just going to settle in. Funny enough is like, I finished and then, like, an hour later, my wife and her friend went out, and I was watching four boys in the house, and I was just like, all right, hopefully these guys listen to me because I cannot be chasing all the... And it, it was like a two, two-year-old, three-year-old, eight-year-old, 11-year-old. So it, it was the gambit, you know what I mean? But everybody was cool. We had a great time. It was nice to just kind of chill out because, you know, we were just playing games and sitting on the floor and, like, not doing much, watching movies. Like, it was easy. It was cool. But then the aftermath was, like, the next day. It was, like, I woke up with straight-up cankles. Like, straight-up cankles because, like, my ankles are swollen and my shin splint, uh, like, at, especially on my right leg, like, I don't know if it's, like, a, it's, like, hematoma almost. Like, it's, it's the muscle, like, the front of my shin has like muscle or skin that it didn't have before that's like hard to push on and it hurts so like i don't know what's going on there but something happened and it was just like okay dude all right so like from my <laughs> knee down to my ankle just kind of goes straight a little bit right now on my right side <laughs> look like a peg leg or something i keep walking like frankenstein but it was absolutely worth it and that was just one of those things where it was like does mind over matter really work and it absolutely does and congratulations from me to you, my friend. No, oh, thanks, dude. On completing the mission, man. Well, it was just one of those things where I just wanted to see if I could do it. And then as soon as I accepted the fact that I was going to, it was like, okay, well, you just have to do it now. And sometimes that's all you yeah. need. Sometimes that's all you need. You know, it's... All it takes is sometimes it's just telling yourself you got to do it, man. So, 
then I did wind up with uh, rewarding myself with In and Out because four by four animal style just seemed apropos as fuck. So you know, I had to do it. In that process, <laughs> I had to go through a really, really awful little drive-through experience. Let me ask you this: What's the proper distance between? You and the car in front of you when you're in the drive-thru. If you're not ordering. You placed your order and you got to move up. What's the proper distance you leave for the car in front of you? Uh, I don't know. Depends on the day. Depends on the day. Yeah. Because sometimes I'll be feeling like I'm in a rush, so I'm up on their bumper, man. I'm on your bumper, bro. I know, but the car in front of you... Whoa, what's up, Mike Sweener? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, video element uh, for anybody that's interested. Uh, no, but I would say, like, what? Like, three feet is good for to for bumper to bumper? Like, the half car length so that you can't pull up to the speaker is fucking egregious, dude. I do not care for that. <laughs> I don't care for that. So, anyway, I'll burn through this in and out story. I pull up to get my 4 by 4 I'm excited about it. I, like, I've been looking forward to this. So, person in front of me pulls up at the in and out drive through just before me. And, like, I could hear from the beginning to end of the order not exactly what it is but basically it's a cheeseburger fries and a small drink it's 750 i hear over the intercom the lady repeat back that'll be 750 at the window then i don't get a chance to pull up all the way because this guy pulls up like just enough to like in his head officially say that transaction of verbal whatever back and forth <laughs> is over and then he just stops there's a half a car length, and I'm like three feet away from the box to order. I'm like, okay, that would piss me. All right, bro, but I'm like, dude, it's in and out. I'm not going anywhere. They make everything to order. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay. Keep me off to the point that I might halt. Like, I thought about it, but I'm like, dude, it's it's twelve o'clock on a Monday. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, and again, they make everything to order. Process for me. So that 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 angers me exactly. They make everything in order so they could be starting to make my burger, but now I gotta wait till I can order and I can't order. But see, that would have pissed they... me off even more because here's what happened right after that. We went into like what is happening mode. This guy pulls up, he gets his bag. As he gets his small drink, he like stops the guy. The guy's like that's delivering the food his hands are coming back in the window and then stop for like a few seconds and then he goes back in then he comes out brings a drink the guy hands him was clearly a hundred dollar bill i can see it because i like him i'm not that far away so i'm like okay that's weird and the guy like is reluctant to take it so i know he's like a hundred dollar bill man like we have barely been open for an hour and a half like we can't whatever <laughs> so he goes in is there for a good couple of minutes and then comes back with a small drink, goes back in, could have been a shake because the cup was green, um, and then comes back with a shitload of change and, like, hands it to the guy in the in the window. Then the guy still doesn't pull off. The guy comes back to the window, goes back in for a couple minutes, then delivers another bag, and the guy pays with a card. So he got up to the window, placed two other separate orders, one of them being for two drinks he paid with a $100 bill, and then paid with a card on the third one. So then I get up to the... So then I'm like, by the time this guy's putting his card in, I'm like out the window, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I hope people can hear me. What is happening right now? So then finally he pulls up. It's been almost 15 minutes that I've been sitting behind this one car. He pulls out. My bag, I could see the grease was creeped up. It's been sitting there forever. It was ready to go like this. And I was like, hey, did that guy just order a bunch of stuff at the window? And this poor kid who was, you know, probably a college kid was like, uh, no, he, he placed three orders. I was like, at the window? He's like, no, no, no. I'm like, okay, because I wanted to tell that dude, like, hey, not for nothing, everybody else behind me is probably going to give you a ton of shit. You should have told that dude, 
park your car, walk up to the window. Because now everybody else is going to be mad at you for that guy being an asshole. But the guy wouldn't acknowledge that he ordered at the window. So I'm like, all right, I ain't going to say shit. And then sure mm-hmm. shit, my food was cold because in and out makes everything to order. Mm-hmm. But I'm also not the guy that's like, hey, go make me fresh everything because I don't think you just made it. You know what I mean? I know you are. Here's that guy. I'm not that guy. Here, here's that guy. And I'm not moving. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to sit at the window while you go make me fresh shit. No, no pull over there. No, no, because you didn't tell the other dude to do that. So now I want the same treatment. So I ain't pulling over nowhere. I'm going to sit at this window till you give me my fresh shit. You dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty heated. So much so that I put, like, I took a picture of the guy and I posted it online in his car. I thought I covered up his license plate and accidentally didn't. <laughs> so I was like, fucking, oh well. That was a Freudian slip there. Oh well. It happens. No, like, well, who's going to go chase down a random Honda Accord with a random license plate? It's not like he had, like, fuck you as a license plate and you're going to see it wherever you go. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. My bad. I'll try yeah. not to do it again. To hell with him. To, to hell, hell with him. With and that's what Aaron Rodgers said to the Broncos. To hell with him. Switch to the football. <laughs> He's just going straight back to the pack. Do you think he, they're going to give him a piece money. of the franchise? Uh, he can't have a piece of the franchise packet owned by the city, but he can't have fifty million dollars a year. He can have that. They can give him that. Oh, that's true. I guess that is true. So you think you think Packers or Aaron go back to the Packers is a good thing? I mean, for him, but uh, they're going to retain. They've he's... tagged Devontae Adams, so he's going to stay. Yeah. But who like you're going to resign Randall Cobb again? Like, what are you going? What are you doing, guys? I don't know what the you could have asked him that when they draft a quarterback with the number one pick or second round pick, whatever pick he was. What the hell, are you drafting Jordan Love? I don't know. How did you do that shit for it to turn around and play Aaron Rodgers fifty million dollars? I don't know. Huh? They got him bent over a barrel. He's got them, I should say, bent over a barrel because he could do whatever they want. He's just so beloved by Packers fans that he could do literally whatever he wants. This shit is crazy. It's bananas. I'm Jordan Love. I'm not even like, after this fourth year's up, leave me the fuck alone. Don't ever talk to me again. I'm out of here. Fucking wasting my time, you dipshits. Yeah, you think the Giants will hold out one more year with Daniel Jones, hoping to get like a Jordan Love, Jimmy G situation? Or you think Jimmy is gone and Jordan Love is I think they're going to bring somebody in this year. You think so? You think they're going to do the Trubisky train? It, it, probably the Trubisky train or like, I don't know, depending on what happened in Cleveland, Baby Baker. If they find some, well, actually, the Baker's going to go to Seattle, bro. Who? You don't think Baker's going to go to Seattle now that Russ is well, in Denver? It depends. They got to get somebody in, in Cleveland to get rid of Baker first. I just realized the dude that they would have got rid of Baker for are re signed. Aaron Rodgers is re signing. Russ has already been traded. And Wentz has been traded, so who the hell do, are they going to get in Cleveland? Nobody. I think they hang out for one more year. Yeah, with sorry ass Baker had eighteen million. <sighs> Stinky. Yeah, yeah, but when you're looking across the pond at fifty million Aaron Rodgers, you're like, eighteen's not bad. Eighteen's not bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we can find a way to win in spite of, he's just so stinky, man. I'm just not a Baker fan, but that's just me. What do you think about uh, any other free agents? Anything splash worthy that's coming up that we should pay attention to before the draft? I mean, as of right now, no, except for the fact that Mari's about to get cut, so somebody's going to get a pretty good receiver. He's not great anymore, but he's a he's a pretty. Good he had receiver. two good years. Yeah. And then we might even also cut Demarcus Lawrence, who I would like be highly upset about because I like Demarcus. I think he still played pretty he was, well. He but... was still one of the pillars of your defense last year. Yeah, I thought he played still pretty well, but if they cut him, those will be two of the bigger free agents. Are you going to re-sign Schultz? They franchise Schultz, man. Like, I don't even know what they're doing in Dallas right now. They're going they bananas. franchise Salty, but didn't franchise Gregory, who I think is a lot more important to our team and bigger upside. Like, Schultz, really? Yeah. Well, you dude, got it's, Jarwin anyway. 
the the Cowboys just seem to follow suit with everybody else. It's like tight ends were the ones getting tagged this year for whatever reason. And it's I like tag them. I would want to see what Eric Ebron did. Wait, like two years ago, it was like defensive ends were getting tagged left and right. Defensive linemen, it was like that's who who was getting tagged. And then now it's changed to tight ends. It, and then <laughs> it's like the parody is so insane that everybody feels like they're playing catch up in the NFL. Like, oh wait. Two, two of the same thing happened. It's like a fantasy football draft when you're like, wait, do you guys have a strategy or are you guys just going off of everybody else's cheat sheet? You know, it's like two running backs go and then everybody's like, oh, panics and I got to get one. It's like, oh, a couple guys got tagged. Let's just tag all our tight ends. I don't know. It seems <laughs> stupid. Because there's a lot tagged. Going on. It is. I don't understand it. But the tight end draft in class is trash. So they're like, yeah, we're not going to get a, tra- a tight end in this draft. So... Yeah, but unless you have a top five tight end, like yeah, but the tag is not is probably like eleven million for a tight end. So for one year, that's not too bad. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, eleven million for a tight end, but you're not willing to pay Baker eighteen an extra seven to have the ball every single down. Seems odd. No, because Baker is really bad. He's better than Dalton him. Schultz at no, his position. Would you say? Yeah. Dalton Schultz had a pretty good year. He had like seven yeah, he did. And like eight touchdowns last year. Like he had a pretty decent year. And like Dalton Schultz wasn't like exactly. And Baker Mayfield's or... a decent quarterback. He's not great. He's not good. He's decent. No, he's bad. He's bad. He's not. He's decent. better than I don't think you realize how bad the bad quarterbacks in the NFL are. He's one of them. He's the among. All the right. Bad. He's he's the top. He's the high end of the shit guys. Can we agree on that? You think so? Out of thirty-two, we were ranking Baker what sixteen, seventeen? No, I'm no, no, Baker no. Like I'm talking like twelve, thirteen, like lower, high end of the lower third. No, but thirteen for Baker? Hell no, Brendan. Is I can name fifteen. I can rattle off fifteen quarterbacks right now that are better than Baker if I needed to. Like, well, Baker that's what. Lit, no, I'm saying twelve or thirteen like from 20. the bottom. From the bottom. Oh, Jesus Christ, like you 20. said 32 oh, teams. That makes him like, yeah. Okay, that makes him like 19, 20. Okay, I'm saying I, D I'm plus C minus right. is right where he's at. Okay. He's at the bottom okay. third. I thought, I thought you were saying he was top 12 or 13. No, no, no. no. I'm saying he's just outside of the – he's just outside of the top 20 or just hits the top 20, barely. Cool. That's what I'm saying. And that's pretty easy in my opinion. You think top twenty is pretty easy? I just said he's probably like twenty three, so top twenty is not that easy. But I give him that just because I don't feel like thinking of twenty quarterbacks that are better than him. Mm-hmm. But I probably could. Like twenty quarterbacks that all if you encompass everything that comes to it, you take them. Like Zach Wilson, he might not be better than Baker right now, but if you had, who to would take you rather have? Baker, That's a who would you rather have you'd situation. Rather have, him, you'd rather have him over Baker, like based on the fact you haven't seen all he can be. We've yeah, seen what Baker. I would is. agree with that, Baker but I'd also it. put Zach Wilson at like the nineteen eighteen spot, like barely, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or twenty, yeah, like yeah. barely in front of. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I'll take him over Daniel Jones. I'll take him over Mitch Trubisky. I'll take him over Mr. even Jalen Hurts. Start of the thirty two that we're talking about. So that and you would not take him. You would take Baker over Jalen Hurts. Yep. right now. Right now, yeah. Yeah, Jalen Hurts is going to have the biggest sophomore slump you've ever seen. Remember Dax? That was his sophomore year right there. This is his junior year. No, no, no. His his second full year as the leader, he's not going to make it past week eight or nine. Well, he didn't have that great of a season, but he's he's always going to – stats is going to be better because he has the running potential. Baker just doesn't have that. And he's a winner, bro. Like, I'd rather have him on my team just off a of natural leadership and winner mentality over Baker. Baker is better than he just said, Jay. Like, I'm not buying that. Well, that's and why Mitchell we Trubisky, debate. And you threw Mitchell Trubisky in the sentence, and Mitchell Trubisky is a backup, bro. Like, we not for long. He's going to be a starter. He's going to be. Exactly. Well, I don't know, but somebody for sure. He won't be a starter ever in this NFL again, unless he's the backup and the starter gets They're hurt. They're talking about him starting be, in New York. No, no, no. He'll go there to push Daniel Jones to get the best out of him. They're not benching Daniel Jones for Mitchell Trubisky. Can you know why? 
he's there for com- competition, but he's really not competition. That's why I said bringing him in. They're like, yeah, bro, I'm going to bring you in as a name. And so Daniel feels the need to step his game up, but you really don't have a chance. I'm Mitch going. Trubisky is just the new Case Keenum. He just yeah, one year is. signs everywhere he goes just to fucking stick a rod up somebody's you know, ass. You're picking a draft, so when your starter hears his name come, they're like, oh, I got to be on my stuff this yeah. year. Let's go, let's go. But that's it, man. Like, nobody worry about Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> <laughs> it's no way. If Mitchell Trubisky comes and take your job, your quarterback was really bad. So Baker's the fourth, what? He's the third best quarterback in his division. And the West, all four of those quarterbacks are better than him. So that's seven right there, just without thinking. I didn't even have to think on that. That's seven. Then you got Dak, just eight. Got Cousins, nine. Like, let me just go down division. Who's in the West? Kyler Murray, we definitely taking him over him. Stafford, yep. we're definitely taking him. Ooh. Russ, is, Russ is now gone, so we don't know who's the starter for Russ. Um, who else? Jimmy G slash Trey Lance. Jimmy G. Jimmy Lance. Jimmy Jimmy G over Baker Mayfield. We're definitely taking Jimmy G instead of Baker Mayfield. Yeah. And the fourth one is not. We don't know who the quarterback is going to be. So he's going to be better. We can go down the east. We can go in the east. Okay, go ahead. Daniel Jones is the question mark. I'll indulge you. him over Daniel. I take take Baker over Daniel, so that's at least one. Yeah, you'll probably take Baker over Daniel. I'm not taking Baker over... And I take Baker over Heineke, too. So there's two there you starters go. that he's better than. And I'm not taking him over Jalen or Dak, though. That's fine. And then we go to the south. You got Tom Brady started there last year. I don't know who's going to start this year. Exactly. So I'll take that. Yeah, he can probably go there and start because we don't know who. But I don't know. Kyle Trask might be better than Baker. But we're just going to right. that up for What about uh, so right New Orleans? Taysom Hill? You take Baker. Yeah, so we got both. Okay, uh, so then Kakalaka, who's in Carolina? Who's in Carolina? Sam Um, Darnold. I take Baker. I'm taking Baker over Darnold. Okay, and then then who else is I'm not taking Baker over Matt Ryan. I'm not taking Baker over. Do you know that um, Matt Ryan has like like $47 million against the cap? (laughs) Yes, I'm not saying he's worth that much, but he's definitely better than Baker. Like, we're not going to say. I don't know. Did you see his stats last year? Like, he got benched for Josh Rosen, who got benched for Frankie Fingers or whatever. No, no, no. That was Freddie his Franks. one game. He didn't get benched. Matt Ryan was back to start of the next game, bro. Like, let's not do that. He oh, just right. had a bad game, bro. Like, what, Okay, would you take Matt Ryan, Ryan this year or Baker Matt this year? Matt Ryan to Baker. You don't want to even compare the numbers, so don't talk about numbers. Like, but this, going into this year, who do you take? Matt Ryan been to a Super Bowl. What? Uh, who, who, this year, who do you take, Matt Ryan or Baker Mayfield? Matt Ryan. Okay, all, day. all right, fair enough. And by the way, I'll just only say this about the Calvin Ridley thing. Be a fucking man and a, and wager a real amount on these games, not what my father-in-law wagers on football games. Come on, dude. Like, drunk driving is the same as buzz driving. If you're getting canned, make it worth it. <laughs> Bet a <laughs> yeah, game check, bro. Is not, yeah, 1500 is not enough to lose $11 million. I'm just going to say that was dumb. Stupid. I'm with you on that. I'm just completely with you on that. That was fucking foolish. Anyway, go ahead. Would you rather... Okay, so who else? We did the, the west, yeah, the east, the, the south. We're in the north. We're, we're definitely taking Kurt over him. We're definitely taking Air Rod over him. Who else? Justin. The Lions. Who? I'm definitely taking Justin over him. Okay, Jared yes. Goff. I take Baker Mayfield. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that, that's iffy. That's, that's iffy. Six. I'll give you... Listen, give you, you I gave you Jalen Hurts. I get Jared Goff. Okay. I'll give okay, you so that. that's six. All right, so that's the that's the NFC, right? Yes. We're halfway done, we so let's go to the AFC. AFC. West. We already did the AFC West in the north. Who's in the south? No, we just, yeah, so New Orleans. We did the, we did, no, we did. No, we did the NFC. NFC, we so. did the NFC. We're moving to the AFC. So we have six. Well, we started with the AFC because I said the whole West is better than him, which is all No, that's now, not, not, no, 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 no. We just, listen, let's go back to AFC West and do it. In order, we're all, we're halfway there and did it correctly. You AFC can leave the West, West out of this. AFC He's not West. Anybody in the West? Okay, Nobody you got Herbert, Mahomes. Oh, dude, Derek Carr. Carr. I take Baker over Carr. All right, we're done. This conversation is over. This all right, I'll let you have it because I know that you like Derek Carr more than Garoppolo. I'll let you have it. I'll let you have let it. Let me have it. Yes. There's no comparison between David Carr and. <sighs> 
in Baker Mayfield. You're like, infuriating sometimes. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. Who wears more mascara, Derek Carr or Baker Mayfield? That's a real bet. <laughs> no, no, that's a real question. But as far as on the football field, it's not a comparison. Fine, so fine, that. fine. Sorry, sorry. AFC. And his division. Okay, AFC. He's the, he's the last North. He's the worst. Okay, AFC North. Who are we starting with? North. He's not better than Lamar. He's not better than Lamar. Joe. And he's not Joe better than. Who? Beryl. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the new Joe. Oh, and we don't know who's the still starter for the Steelers, so that'll make him seven. So that's, so that's seven, seven there, and then uh, Steelers. That's what I'm saying. We don't oh, know who the Steelers, Steelers is. Steelers. Um, he's the fourth. He's and the then fourth. he is the Cleveland, yeah. Do you take Baker yeah, over seven. Baker? <laughs> Depends on the day. Did he party the yeah. night before? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're at seven. Let's go to the AFC South. AFC, AFC South is the South. Texans. I take him over Tyrod Taylor or whoever the fuck they're going to plug no, in. No, I don't take him over David. Um, I don't take him over the boy Mills? from Stanford. Stanford. Yeah, I don't take him over Davis Mills. No, 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 no. Mm, I think you got to give me that one. I'll give you that one, but if you ask me my personal opinion, David Mills has a lot more to work with okay, than I'll tell you. Mayfield, bro. Yeah. As okay. a quarterback in the NFL, he's a, he's only played one year, but as far as skills, I've seen him play a lot better. Like, Baker is not – Yeah, but you, we him. haven't seen him translate yet. We've seen the potential again. But, see, I give Zach Wilson way more more credit than Davis Mills. So, we'll we'll put that as a tiebreaker. That's potentially a tiebreaker, okay? So, that we're still at seven. So, we got the Texans, the Titans, the Titans. which I'm – Tannehill can stay, obviously. Yeah. Um, which even that one's probably closer than it should be. But then we also have Zach Wilson, who we agree on. We take over Baker. No, Zach Wilson in the East. Um, or the Wilson East. I'm sorry. Um, um, the Colts. I'm taking the Colts. Yeah, I'm Colts. Taking I take. Ah! I'm taking Carson. He can't play. He does play. What do you mean? He plays better than Baker. I don't know. That's tough. No, he I'm doesn't. Have no, he doesn't. That's tough. That's a tough one. So That's I'll take that one. one for eight. Okay. And then, so we just ran Who's through. Who's fourth team? Texans, Colts. Uh, Titans. Titans. And who do they always play? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, the Jags. And I'm taking, and I'm definitely taking Trevor. <laughs> so. All right. I'll give you that one. So we're still at eight, and then we go to the AFC East. Okay, Zach Wilson's got it. I take him over Tua. Sorry. You take him over Tua? You take Baker over Tua? Yeah. I don't think <laughs> – Just With don't five see. years – Baker has five years in the bag, and he's showing you what he's going to be. Tua, after year two, just won seven games in a row. Like, I don't – and he doesn't even have full weapons, weaponry around him. I don't know. On potential, I might take Tua. I'll give you that for number nine because Baker has made it to the playoffs. So, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. We got to compromise I'm here. I'm not taking him over Mac Jones, though. I'll give you Tua. No. I'm not better than Mac. Mac is our guy, baby. <laughs> Mac is our guy. No, no, and no. We, and then we know he's not better than Josh Allen. So, we gave him eight, and we had an iffy, so maybe nine. Wait, what so was the other? 20, he, he's oh, around 23, wait, so, like I said. Yeah. Bills. So we got Bills. Bills. Fucking. Bills, I know, I just forgot Patriots. everybody in the AFC. Oh, Bills, Patriots, oh, yeah, Jets. There you go. There you go. And, and the Dolphins. Um, there we go. Dolphins. All right, so we're at nine guarantees, and I'm at two that I gave you that I didn't want to. So, yeah, you're 23, I'm about 21. There you go. So and bad. he can't be better than himself. So it's actually technically at a 31. So I, he's yeah. right at 20 for me. And he's around 22, 21 for me. But All right. I I gave in on some ones that I probably wouldn't in most situations. I know. I gave in on I gave in on the Davis Mills, which I think I could have probably taken. And a lot of them we gave up because we just don't know who the starter is going to be because Garoppolo is going to be filling one of those sides, and then it will be him and versus Trey Lance, and I don't know about that because the Trey Lance didn't really wow me. Yeah, that was scary. And then the Redskins starter is going to be Carson Wentz, and we said Carson Wentz was better, so that would he would have lost that one in reality. Well, Carson Wentz is not better. <laughs> I take Baker. Carson Wentz is definitely better. Whatever. Yeah. Baker plays through injuries, and Carson Wentz throws interceptions. 
it doesn't count when you play through injury and stink. Like, I want people to understand this. Like, the Michael Jordan flu game is not the Michael Jordan flu game if he go out there and has four points and shoots one for 18. It's the flu game because he was amazing and he scored 36 to close out a team in the championship. There's a difference between that. If you go out there with a hurt arm and you stink, people are going to say, you shouldn't have been out there, buddy. <laughs> you shouldn't have been out there, buddy. Like, there's a difference, man. Like, And I hate that he gets this credit for being this tough guy who plays with injury, but he's no, see while I, he's out there. I somewhat agree with you on that. I, I agree with you that sometimes it's not, like, you're not doing you're not doing us any favor. Like, when Aaron Rodgers plays through an injury that, you know, makes him at 90% or 85%, he's still better than the alternative. Baker sometimes puts himself in this tough guy role where he is not better than the alternative because he's immobile and he already gets sacked seven times a game. But and he did take he's a not game. Aaron or, Rogers, bro, so right, like, exactly. I agree with you on that. What I will say is that he did sit on the bench for a game or two here or there, and then they were exponentially worse without him. So he's like, "Fuck it, I'm coming they back." One, they went one and one, so they weren't exponentially worse. He's only missed. He missed two games. They went one and one. The backup was the third stream because the second stream got hurt too, like because of COVID. So it was like the third stream, the backup was probably even kill. Let's just be honest. If they could have had the second stream, they might have been even kill. Like it's not the differential between Baker we'll and see. his backup is probably not that much. And they bring in a better backup. The first sign of any mistakes, he's gonna snap. You know what I Baker. hate is that you you're making me defend Baker Mayfield, and I fucking hate that. <laughs> but I have to play devil's advocate when I think you're wrong. <laughs> as you should, as you should. But yes. Oh Baker, man, Baker, 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 Baker. Well, I know you're gonna be watching the combine and every mock draft that comes out over the next forever until the draft happens. But are you watching anything else right now? Uh, you know, man, I'm, I'm on Netflix, so I'm, I'm watching a little bit of everything. Uh, I watched, like, The Worst Roommate Ever. I started that. Um, I'm finishing up Big Brother because I, like, record that. So I finished Law and Order. I got a couple new series, I mean, uh, episodes out. So, yeah, I got, I'm all over the place. All Americans back. So I'm, I got a What's All American? Right uh, that's the show about the dude who went to Oregon, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Day. Gosh, you said that last week and I forgot already. What about yeah. Snowfall? I'm going to start watching that. It's recorded. I haven't started that yet. Is it season four or least, five? I think it's four, but I want to wait till like five or six episodes. And I hate having them like wait a whole week to see it again. Like, no, I hate Because that's, there's a lot of buzz around that. That's still like one of the best shows out there. So I think I'm going to yeah. dive into it pretty soon and just like, and I'll be able like to binge it. and then catch up towards the and end of the season. So I'm just great. like, I'm going to blow it out in like a week or two and just be entrenched in it. You know what I mean? That'll be great right there. And I'm, uh, I started listening to, I'm not saying I don't listen to my own podcast, but um, Rick Ross has a podcast the who Snowfall is based on. So he's like breaking down really? the episode, how much, how much is true, how much is, you know, like the what? fabrication of it all, because it's based on his story. You know, I met so, him? You know, where? In oh, a bar. Freeway Ricky Ross? Yeah, I met him in a, that, man? in a, sh- like a dive bar in the valley. And funny enough, it was like, I went there with my sister. It was a crazy wild night. Like, there's so much shit that happened before it. It was like, let's just go to this local dive bar where we could just hole in the wallet and like, oh my gosh, like, let's let nothing crazy happen. So I end up shooting the shit with somebody who's just sitting at the bar talking, like, you know, the girls are doing whatever. And I'm just shooting the shit with this guy. And so we end up getting pretty friendly over the course of like an hour because I would just keep going to the same spot to get drinks, chat with him for five minutes because he's sitting alone. And so eventually it's like, who are you waiting for? He's like, you wouldn't. I don't know, man. I'm like, what? He's like, oh, I'm waiting for my homie. But you probably, you know, I don't know, man. I'm like, Wh- whatever. So I kind of leave it alone. I get back to it. And then we get talking. And he's like, oh, my boy just got here. He's like, oh, hey, what's up? And then like I go to like give him a dab or whatever we were doing at the time. It was a long time ago, 12 years ago, maybe. And I see the tattoo on his right forearm or left forearm, whatever it is. I see a tattoo and I recognize it. And I'm like, cause I didn't recognize his face is dark, got a beard and shit. And I'm like, Rick Ross. And he's like, 
Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I just read an article in Maxim Magazine about you and how you like to barbecue. So I sat there, bought him a drink. I bought him like a $25 drink because he drank some. And we're some, talking about the real Rick Ross. The real Rick Ross. He was coming in to see one of his buddies at a local joint. They went to this hide, like hole in the wall place so that nobody would know him. But I recognized his tattoo. And so I sat there and talked to him about barbecue for like 15 minutes. And I was like, okay, dude. All right. Well, we're leaving. So see you later. <laughs> Fucking took off. It's pretty rad. <laughs> and, okay. I'm confused. I mean, tattoo. It's got like some weird script. Like it looks like a like it's writing. So you're talking about the rapper Rick Ross. Yeah. That's not who Snowfall is based off of. I was wondering if that's who you were talking about. Okay. okay. I don't know the So that's okay. a, See, I don't know what Snowfall's about. Freeway, <laughs> so the real freeway Ricky Ross was a drug okay. dealer, bro. Like that's where the rapper Rick Ross got his name from. Which is why I was sitting here a bit confused because I'm like, I don't think Rick Ross has that. A tattoo. I think he's talking about the rapper. No, the real Rick Ross. Gotcha, like gotcha, Freeway gotcha. Freeway Ricky Ross, who was from California. Yes, so. I do remember. I don't know the details about him, but I do know of the real Rick Ross. So now I'm definitely going to have to watch it. Yeah, now I'm so in. That's, that's what this is about. That's just some white boy That's what Snowfall right there. is about. I was so tempted to bring up the correctional (laughs) facility thing, and I'm like, you know what? This is going well. Why don't you leave him alone? (laughs) Hey, that's what you got me for, man. I need to rewatch The Last Dance, though. I still haven't seen all of it. Oh, man. I'm such a bad person. I watch shit like oh, Vikings. Like I started watching Vikings Valhalla, like to go to sleep to, and I don't know why, but some for some reason, like that soothes me. <laughs> so I usually throw on like one episode of Valhalla, fall asleep. That's my new jam. I love that show. <laughs> it's really, really rad. I fall asleep to uh, the HGTV channel, like housing, like people fixing their houses up and shit. <laughs> yeah, that can be pretty boring. <laughs> oh shit did you watch oh did you watch winning time no what is that that's the thing about showtime i kept saying showtime the showtime lakers oh, the showtime it's lakers? called winning time the show is no i haven't i heard it's pretty good though i, uh, I saw some like you know espn personalities and stuff talking about it so. it's it's pretty good i mean listen it's adam mckay produces and directs it and like is a writer on it and it's basically him looking in the mirror at himself you while he made a show. You know what they should have made a show of? What? This game that happened on Saturday, you know, this coach was like his last home game ever, and then his rivalry came to play against them, and then they like won, and it was like 300 <laughs> of his old players there, and they were all looking sad, sad, sad. <laughs> oh. oh, the Dukies got dumped on, and Coach K no. went off to go snort some K, and feel better about himself. <laughs> He probably did because it was. He probably felt like shit to put on that performance on that day with us. They lost to us. Like how great! Unranked North Carolina takes down Duke in Coach K's final home game, where it was just like, all we got to do is win, guys. Doesn't matter what it looks like, just win. <laughs> just win the game. Instead, you got to get your ass kicked by sixteen. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Carolina. Now let's make a run in the tourney, baby. All right, I had to get that in before the show was yeah, on. Right, this one. like that's going to happen. Oh, well. We're at least going to the Sweet 16. I'm willing to put money on that. Oh, well, you still owe me a bet. I think we're going to get that one handled in May. That one's coming up. Yeah, that one's going to get handled pretty soon, coming up here. Because yeah, we got to see each other soon. I got to do something with my life. We so, yeah. are going to see each other soon. And the next time you see us, I will review my uh my take on the batman because we went and saw that for movie night um we went to dinner in a movie and saw the batman but i don't know i'm flip-flopping on how i feel about it because i'm letting it settle in a little bit so i was going to review it this week but i think i'm going to let it settle in and review it next week so on that note be sure to check out the spotify playlist of the week this week it is a tribe called quest and me first in the gimme gimme's it's a mouthful just like us, but 
It is a good one. So on that note, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Black Irish Pod, at Black Irish213 for Mike, at Brendal7 for myself. Uh, subscribe, rate, just share it. Do whatever you got to do. Do an action item on our podcast if you listen to it. That's we appreciate about, it. Man. Show us some love and happy Women's Month to all y'all ladies out there. Happy Here International Women's Month. Go get it. Or whatever that is. There you go. And we'll see you next week. And peace. Hey, make sure you're laughing. Make sure you're hugging. Make sure you're loving. And if you have to do it to yourself, that's okay too. On that note, be good to each other. We love y'all. Check you later. Peace.